This place really gives me the creeps. Should we watch another short? What choice do we have? We could talk for hours and hours about nothing in general. The only thing that takes hours and hours is standing behind you at the candy counter. <sighs> Whatever you say, pencil neck. I don't think I can stand another minute with you. The torture is mutual. Oh, look, pal, if you think well, look, two cents, I would kick you off. These guys are great. Oh, no, 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 no. I wish you were going to take that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything's coming along fine. Mm -hmm. So far, we're on budget or on schedule. That's all that matters. Mm -hmm. But I can't, I can't do any more spooks. I'm sorry. But we've got no more money. All right? We spent it all on pencils. What can I say? I can't do a Canadian werewolf in Hollywood. It's impossible. I've got to do those transformations, the hair growth, the teeth, the eyes. Who do you think I am? I'm sorry. It's, 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 it's impossible. I've exhausted my resources. There is no... Hello? All right. I've given it some thought. I'll do it. But it's got to be a night shoot. I had I first had an interest with puppets, string puppets and hand puppets and finger puppets and that. And then when I got to be about eight or nine, I started into magic. I used to do all kinds of tricks. I used to uh, saw my sister in half, which my mom <laughs> wasn't too happy about. She came home one day and saw my sister there in a box, and the saw was halfway through her. And, you know, she'd be in a box, her head sticking out one end, her feet the other, and the saw is halfway through the box, and my mom would come downstairs and say, Brian, get to your room. And then I got about 13 or 14, I got a hold of my dad's camera. He wasn't your average kid. When he was only 13, Brian Stoller turned a fascination with magic into an obsession for film. BMS, he's the, uh, the brains of the show here. Brian Michael Stoller is the name and Super 8 home movies are his game. This CBOT show called Film Fun taught kids about the world of film. Brian Stoller was a resident film expert. Uptown for this little man is Hollywood, California. He's Ottawa's Brian Stoller, and at age 20, he's already made 65 short films and won several film awards. He began almost a decade ago. At an age when most kids were just starting to go to the movies, Brian decided he wanted to make movies. Set up, O'Connor. Harry, I said call the exterminator. I spoke with companies in Montreal and companies in Toronto, and nobody really wanted to give a kid a chance. And uh, I was very discouraged. And when I did go down to Hollywood just, you know, to go to the American Film Institute, I looked into oppor opportunities, uh, and, and they were given to me. You know, there's a great young filmmaker in town named Brian Stoller. And any time he brings us one of his short comedy films, we're very happy to show it to you. I think he's going to be another Steven Spielberg. And when that day comes, I'll be proud to say, Give me a job. Here's this week's film by Brian Stone. Where's the bird cage? Mr. McFlighty runs a small bird cage company. His clients are located all over the world and they need their cages. I'm leaving just as soon as I finish my lunch. We'd have been here three days ago, but we ran out of gas after we hit the train. Then Mr. McFlighty found out about Second Chance Express. Hello? Second Chance Express? Where's the package? When did it have to be there? No problem.
Great Chance Express, when it had to be there yesterday. Uh, some of the films I've done, I've done for causes. For instance, one film I did uh, for a carnival against muscular dystrophy. And uh, I've also done a number of pollution probe films, too. There's cartoon animation, this is with drawings, tabletop, and then pixelation. Okay, uh, tabletop is, is the same form, it's an animation form. And what it is, you're working in single frames. Uh, you make model, it's three dimensional is what it is. Instead of having to draw thousands and thousands of drawings over again, you're working with one model and you're just moving the model in different positions. And usually I, I shoot on twos and this, is, this means shooting on uh, every two frames. You know, you click two frames for each time you move the, the uh, subject. And uh, when the film comes back from developing, you've only exposed the movements that you've made. You don't see the in-betweens when you're moving the hand. And uh, it appears that you bring life to these characters. These are some of your latest stars. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if you could tell our viewers um, something about how you create magic with them in one of your pictures. Okay, well, the <clears throat> these characters are from The Frog Prince. This is my latest 16-millimeter movie. The Frog Prince uh, is about a five-minute animated film that I've been working on since September. So I've been, I've been working on that for about six months now. And uh, the actual set is made from... The, the sets as well are three-dimensional. You're not working with drawings or anything. You have to work with depth depth of field as well if you want to make it look realistic. It's in my mind how I want him to move. Get him to open his mouth because I just love that. <laughs> Brian Stoller, director, on the set of one of his latest films. <laughs> will be free. in his basement that Brian spent many hours as a boy making and watching his films. He began with simple tabletop animation and gradually worked his way up to live action. Hit and Run, an armchair athlete's dream of playing the big league, was one of his first live action films. He made it when he was 14. I started very young and I think I overcompensated a lot. Um, I was a little guy with a little squeaky voice, you know, and I, I sort of felt that I was lower than everybody and I at least wanted to get on everybody's level. So I overcompensated, I made the films and I tried harder than I, you know, I think that I even had to. 
The solemn little face that stared out from under a fireman's hat hasn't really changed. From an early age, Brian knew he was going to be a filmmaker. So did his mother. He was very determined. He was a um, one-tracked individual. Mm -hmm. uh, I refer to him most often to other people as uh, somebody with uh, like a horse with blinders on going in one direction only. They couldn't see beyond what there was other than the film business. But Brian's father didn't understand his son's passion for film. Years ago, he even tried to discourage it. Well, as a matter of fact, I, I, I told him to quit all this nonsense and, and, and get serious and go get a job someplace. Wax on. Wax off. Wax on. Wax off. Wax on. Wax off. Yogi. I'm fed up doing all your chores, cleaning all your cars. You're supposed to teach me karate, not how to clean cars. You're doing karate training. You're nuts. Michael's on. Show me wax car. Wax on, wax off. Wax on, wax off. Hey, 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 hey! Number one gift. Oh, Mr. Yogi. This is my old gift. Wow. I can't wait to try it out. Thanks. Wax on, wax on. Wax on, wax on. Wax on, wax off. Wax on, wax off. Wax on, wax off. Wax on, wax off. Wax on. Brian and his animation began making an impact on the Ottawa film scene when he was only 13. Interviews on talk shows and in magazines became second nature, and international awards par for the course. So it followed naturally that he be one of only 26 accepted out of thousands of applicants for the American Film Institute in Hollywood. It offered a learning environment for him this past year to produce, direct, and write three 22-minute flicks with professional actors called Just Joking, Crystal Clear, and this, The World Needs You. Here, a lovable man from space is sent by his planet to save Earth from blowing up. Only his powers were affected in transit. May I help you, sir? I'm looking for a way to get to the center of the Earth. I think I'm being very hard on myself, actually, but I think it's the only way you, you can do it. Uh, if I said to myself, well, I'm going to direct a feature film one day, uh, it's like procrastinating. That one day may never come unless you set a, a time for it. And that's why, you know, I'm planning to produce a feature film now. And anything that I want to do, instead of waiting and talking about it, um, I just like to go out and do it. Otherwise, I don't think it'll get done. So being hard on myself, if I say I'm going to, you know, make well, successful films, um, it's not, that I, it's not that I'm fooling myself, it's what I want to do. And sometimes you have to talk that way to believe in yourself and to really believe you can do it. Brian Michael Stoller has been farming his film ideas since the tender age of 10. He's home this week for a holiday and for the first time in years took a look at some of the 8mm films he produced as a child. Kind of funny to see you know how i started out and you know it, it actually makes me feel good because i feel like i have gotten better i can sort of see little things that i did then uh you know things i was learning then that of course now are applied to, to filmmaking now
Come from Canada's capital to the world's movie capital. What do you see yourself doing in a few years down the road? Where do you want to be? Well, I'd like to continue with the way I'm going now, but I'd like to do feature, you know, feature films. Um, as a writer-director, mainly as a director, I, I'd like to co-produce and write them also, but mainly as a director, but I think my ultimate goal is to go back up to Canada and do some films that are considered Canadian. Um, and I think you sort of have to make your mark here in Hollywood, and then they'll accept you back home in Canada. Benner, one more question, Mr. Benner. I said no more questions. Just one more question, Mr. Benner. Mr. McKee. Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Good night. Dr. David Benner, a scientist trying to tap into the inner strengths that all men possess, discovered that an overdose of gamma radiation could alter his body chemistry. And now, when David Benner becomes angry or outraged, a startling metamorphosis occurs. Get his hand back! tripod so I had to tape my camera to a bunch of books on a table mm. and I had to use 60 watt light bulbs until I finally bought 150 watt light bulbs and uh, you know I didn't have the professional really really the professional equipment that was needed you know one of the frequent features on our show is the short comedy film these are uh, little gems made by talented young filmmakers with the sort of offbeat senses of humor one such young man is Brian Stoller and he's won a lot of film festival awards for comedy shorts like this.
Well, I, I always knew we'd work together again. Uh, you in the politics, uh, guerrilla warfare. I can't imagine doing anything else. I, um, I've been interested in filmmaking since I was probably 10 years old. Um, I don't know anything else. I, I, I can't work a nine to five job. I have to work a, a 7 a.m. to midnight job, in a sense. I mean, filmmaking is a full-time occupation. Now we got something a little special for you. You know, a lot of the biggest directors in the film industry got their start making shorts. Well, what the connection between the underwear business and movies is anybody's guess. <laughs> Anyway, a very talented writer-director named Brian Stoller has been making hilarious short films for years. The Hit Squad is honored to have him here as our guest, Mr. Brian Stoller. <laughs> Brian, how you doing? Welcome to the Hit Squad. Thank you, Thanks. Listen, before we, uh, before we look at the film you brought with you, I'd like, to, I'd like to know how you got started, really. Well, like a lot of directors, I, uh, I started out making shorts. Yeah? Of course, the connection between the underwear business and making movies is anyone's <laughs> Yeah, I wish we had more time to chat, Brian, but uh, <laughs> you better show your film. What's it about? Everyone's favorite alien, E.T. All right, let's watch. Okay. Mm Hey, thanks a lot for dropping by to see us. My pleasure, Kelly. Oh, uh, just one question before you go. Sure. Uh, I bet now that you're making movies, you're probably always on the lookout for great scripts, huh? <laughs> you want me to read that, Kelly? Yeah, would you please? Sure. I'm looking for a new project for Pat Sajak. <laughs> Brian Stoller, ladies and gentlemen. My reason is to uh, entertain and to create an escape for the audience. Um, you know, life has its ups and downs, and I don't know, I just like the thought of being able to make people laugh, to entertain them, just to take them away for an hour and a half. Ellen McFry, a beautiful, hard-working woman. She led a simple, safe life at the potato factory. Until one day, while peeling potatoes, a shelf of skins fell on her. She was pregnant at the time. This is the frightening story of her son, born with a terrible disfigurement. He was taken to a medical asylum, an institution for the care of the unfortunate. Behind me over there is Dr. Hatcher and Nurse Jean. Don't worry, they can't see me. Were it not for Dr. Hatcher, Ellen McFry's son would have spent a lifetime of isolation and misery. Soon, Nurse Jean will see the horrid and disfigured patient for the very first time. Please take this food up to the patient in the isolation ward. Now, there's nothing to be afraid of. He's not going to hurt you. Yes, doctor. Uh-huh. 
right. He's a potato head. This is the true story of a spud who was forced to live his life as a misfit. I am not a vegetable. I am not a vegetable. One of Stoller's staunchest supporters is actress Linda Blair. She starred in the blockbuster hit, The Exorcist. Recently, Blair played the leading role in a Stoller-produced spoof of that hit called The Heckling. Do you have any idea why this is happening to your daughter? No. Maybe it's hereditary. He's desperate to get a laugh. He'll try anything. Puns, insults, prop humor, even fat jokes. God! Yes. So whatever you do, don't laugh. <laughs> but um, seriously, folks, I, uh, I just flew in from Vegas, and uh, boy, are my arms tired. Are you the creature inside of Raven? I know I am, but what are you? <laughs> the shook. In the darkness of the night. Do away with his wit and sarcasm. My mother-in-law is so ugly. Uh, how ugly is she? Rabbi Herring. She's so ugly, she has to sneak up on the mirror to shave. <laughs> Don't answer your set of beds, all right? I'm sorry. <laughs> Be silent! Oh, please. Can we talk here? Oh, sure. Knock, knock. Don't answer, Rabbi. Knock, knock. Knock! No! We'll never answer! All right! Who's there? Oh, Father, don't! When I'm calling... When I'm calling who? When I'm calling you... Linda Blair wasn't, but over the telephone, she had this to say about oh, director Brian. I sort of believe he's the next Steven Spielberg, if, if I may be so bold. I think uh, he's, he's very talented, he's very kind of quiet, but what's inside is a, is a gifted person, that, uh, and it's just a matter of time before it's his time. I don't mind being compared to Steven Spielberg. Um, I think everybody has, has an idol, somebody they look up to in their field, whether it be an actor uh, or an actress. Um, and I've learned a lot just from watching his films, you know, studying his style, his shots, um, and his timing is, I think, is, is amazing. Well, Newslight today taking on a Friday the 13th theme. Hope you're not superstitious. Just a few odds and ends. All of the Friday the 13th movies are expected to rent big today because today is the 13th. So we thought we'd show you a piece from a spoof of those movies with the whacked Jason-type guy in the goalie mask. It's a parody done by Brian Stoller where the goalie mask guy is, in fact, a goalie. Everyone's worst fear in goalie, the game continues. Let's see some hustle on the warm-up. It's Friday the 13th. That gives us just two weeks before we meet Camp Summer Skate, all right? So I want to see those skates skating, those sticks sticking, and those pucks sliding. Let's go. Come on. They were just a bunch of kids at hockey camp, happily skating the summer away until they met the goalie. Tell him that. Uh, coach, we don't want to play with that goalie. Yeah, he, he's too big. He's too old. He's got a knife. Being a he's just he's too a weird. Weird. Not not Hey, hey, hey. He's a bozo. Quiet down, quiet down. Show some manners. His parents are here. 
Is this an intimidating city or what? It's, it's pretty intimidating. The thing is, though, that these people are having their names walked all over. That's the, I mean, would you want to be walked all over? I mean, you know. <laughs> would you love to yes, be I, Yeah, I, yes, I would. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind. It means something. It's, it's, it gives a person merit. Brian Stoller has worked with some of Hollywood's biggest. Legendary actor, comedian, Jerry Lewis. Actress, comedian, Madeline Kahn. Multi-talented, Marty Feldman. Character actor, John Abbott. Movie and TV star, Jim Backus. TV personality, Merv Griffin. And comedic actor, Pat Morita. I'm looking for a particular type of rock. Thank you so much for your attention tonight and for your laughter. Love you all. Wee! Wee! Oh, no, no. Hi, I'm Gallagher, an expert driver. And here at Gallagher, uh, testing and safety, we do a lot of testing for safety. And my job is to look at all the films play them backwards. We got to have fun too. Look at this film here of a driver hitting a brick wall at 20 miles an hour. You want to see it at 100? Let's play the film fast. The great thing about a brick wall is you can use them over and over again. Are seat belts the answer? No. So what did we learn from all of this testing and filming and watching and fashion and crashing? Don't let mannequins drive. Make them take the bus and hitchhike. He fell down. <laughs> Barbara Streisand, for example. Here's mm -hmm. Barbara Streisand mm -hmm. start. You've worked with her. What was she like? She's supposed to be very difficult. She, she's not. She's. I was told that she's intimidating, but you know, working with her, I just found that she, you know, she's she's a pretty normal person. You just have to treat her like a somebody. I mean, she's expecting to be treated like a celebrity, so you have to treat her that way. Don, what do you say we take a look at a short film produced, directed, and written by our favorite young filmmaker, Brian Stoller? In the words of France's most respected filmmaker, Jerry Lewis, lights, lights cameras, cameras, action, action, roll on. Roll on. We are airborne. I spotted the enemy, sir. I'm going in for a closer look. Permission from Missile Lock. Looks like there might be a dog fight. Time to land, mister. I started making films, I couldn't afford a tripod. And you know what I used? What? I used a stepladder. And I put the camera on the different steps of the height I wanted it to Over the years, Brian has directed more than 100 shows. 
many of them comedy shorts that had been seen right across North America. It's no joke. He's shooting for the stars, but he promises Hollywood won't change him a bit. Uh, you know, I'm start people are starting to know my work in this town, and and uh, it's just now someone needs to give me that opportunity to do that first feature. A perfect couple. One works behind the camera. Beautiful, beautiful. The other in front of it. I got the part. But into their perfect world will come two perfect strangers. Sometimes I feel like a god up here. It's incredible up here. Turn to the left. Will you do nudity? What? Nudity. We're a woman of temptation. You never mentioned your pilot was a woman. We can be so good together. And a man of obsession. Could you remove the rope, please? Will change their lives forever. Sam, did you have an affair with her? Let me explain, all right? Can you make us believe that life as you know it is about to end? Well, a married man, can't you understand? Well, it's a little late to think of her. Perhaps I get a chance to sneak down and catch you. Ah! Has something happened to Kelly? You come anywhere near her, and I will kill you. When there are too many suspects, Stay away from me. I'm watching you. Hello? Who do you trust? I'm in charge up here. Who do you fear? This is for that husband of yours, too. <laughs> and where do you hide? <laughs> Turn of the blade. Some passions cut like a knife. Turn of the Blade is not a big budget film by Hollywood standards. Eight months in production, total cost just under one million dollars. But for Ottawa-born director Brian Michael Stoller, it is a milestone. Fourteen years and hundreds of rejections later, Finally, one of his ideas is on its way to the big screen. You seem a little down tonight. Trouble with Sam? Why do you say that? Come on. It comes from a seed. It's just, I get an idea for something, something triggers something. I'm always thinking, I'm always getting ideas. And then you just sort of plant that idea, that, that seed, and you let it grow. <laughs> films about a year ago and I think that you know from my first film I've improved you know every film I've done. It's a psychological thriller. It's about a married still photographer who has a brief but very dangerous affair with a female uh, helicopter pilot. It's it's a lot of work to produce and direct and it's, it, it may sound very uh, glorified you know very exciting but if I had my druthers I would rather just do the preliminary producing and then have another producer come on board and take over while I concentrate on doing all my directing duties. If I'm working on a film and I've got the idea, you know, I go downstairs to my workshop 
And I can work there six, seven hours nonstop. I was actually 13 at the time. I was very fortunate to be a part of uh, a program called Film Fund on CBC, which was uh, actually 21 years ago. So, uh, and Brian Frappier was the uh, producer, director on the show. Brian had, uh, I guess, discovered me. It was a real good experience to let me know that there could be a career in this. My parents, they're a little worried about me working on my films too long because they think it's going to interfere with my schoolwork. And um, I did just get back from the Cannes Film Festival. And it was my first time to the French Riviera, which was exciting. And we just got foreign distribution. And we did quite well. It's definitely going to be released in the, in the States. A girl must be prepared. It takes a lot of persistence. Uh, it takes a lot of faith uh, and a lot of patience. This is the new camera I got. It was the second film I did. And it had a, uh, you had to adjust to the focus. And I had five feet put down, but I was four feet, you see. So that's why it was a little bit out of focus. And I, I struggled and, uh, you know, paid my dues. And, but I, I was very persistent, and I didn't give up. And there's a difference between being persistent and being a pest. And you have to know the fine line on that. A lot of the doors have opened you know, a lot easier in, in the States than they have in Canada. And uh, you know, I was born here in Canada, and I would love to come back here and work. The reason I've stayed in the States is because it's a lot easier to get people on the phone uh, and I'm not even as well known in the States as I am in Canada. Well, I know what the problem is. Wait a minute. This is the problem. Oh, the music's okay. upside, upside down. down. Yeah, that's what right. His family encouraged his movie making as a child, but they wanted no part of Hollywood. I wasn't happy about it. Why? Uh, because he was too young. He didn't know anybody in California. He didn't know where to go or who to see, but he just went. What do you think now? Well, I guess he persisted, and maybe I was wrong. I don't know. <laughs> and where do you hide? Turn of the Blade is a psychological thriller that's a mix between the blockbuster hits A Jagged Edge and Fatal Attraction. It's already been sold in Europe, and North American release is still several months away. Investors have already broken even. Uh, the type of movies I like to see are the type of movies I'd like to make. Those are movies like King Kong, um, Star Wars, the Muppet movie, James Bond movies. Um, you know, movies that have special effects or something different. You know, either it happens on another planet or it's, um, you know, under, under the, the earth or it's yeah. science fiction or it's animated. Something, you know, something that's not just everyday happenings. Out of the wasteland of a post-apocalyptic future. Come the dragons. Out of the past comes the last hope for the survival of humanity. Predestined to join a fierce warrior mate. and fight for the freedom of a planet. What is he doing in this picture with my father? That's Mason, the one I told you about. He was a great George II warrior with your father. There is a computer program that can control the minds of men. It is missing one electronic chip. The item. Where is it? I don't know. I swear I don't know. I'm going to ask the questions. And you're going to give me the answers. Control the mind every person in the world. We'll see about that. Fight! Inexorably drawn to a final showdown with the master of evil. Frozen in time, 
The Ultimate Warrior is back. To defend the future. Dragon Fury 2. The film is about a physicist, Jake Anders, who creates what's called the Deoxer Chamber. It's the brainchild of Ottawa-born writer-director Brian Michael Stoller, a sci-fi adventure film that has hundreds in the capital searching for stardom. This is something I've wanted to do since I was 16 and never had the chance. Now my family's grown and I thought, why not? At stake are jobs for about 200 actors and actresses in a movie called The Random Factor. Please seal the chamber and step away from the vehicle. I bet your Max Keeping down at the Channel 8 News would love to hear your plans for my deoxer chamber. Oh, you're that boy over at MedTech who invented that contraption. That's right. And we both know it's not over at MedTech anymore, don't we? Well, I don't know any such thing. Welcome to the Oxier Chamber. Ready? I am Dexter. Your co-pilot. Sound is Roll sound. Hollywood has come north to the capital region. Market. Brian, off a bit. Stand by. Action. And the man directing the first full-length feature film to be shot entirely here in decades is L.A.-based hometown movie maker Brian Michael Stoller. <laughs> I've always been curious why people have not chosen Ottawa as a location before. It's a beautiful city. Um, there's just so many great landmarks. It's just such a waste that nobody has actually shot in Ottawa. I mean, people shoot all over the world, and uh, but they haven't shot in Ottawa. So I'm hoping that, that this will uh, this will put Ottawa on the map. This is 11 Bravo. Take one. The set on this day is a Minto-built model home in the Peans Center Point community. You won't stand at full height. You don't have to worry. Like Stoller co-wrote the Random Factor, a screenplay about a scientist whose own invention propels him into a parallel world where everything is backwards. Like she should be here. I am not doing this for myself, Jen. Get that through your head. The scientist is played by actor Andrew Devoff. His movie credits include roles in Hollywood hits like Another 48 Hours, Toy Soldiers, and A Low Down Dirty Shame. What brought me here is the is the script and sort of the intrigue of coming to Big Town. I'm not kidding. You gotta go back. Come on, Alex. I mean, come on. What is this? That that paradox you're talking about? That that, that, that everything is rubber? No. Come on. In a manner of speaking, your crossing over has created a conflict of sorts. You've got to leave this mirror world. So where's the proof that that I somehow screwed up the space-time continuum? How do you know? Snowman in July would be a good start. I've documented your life story. The Earth has reversed its rotation. We're heading towards the Ice Age, man. Ever since that chamber sent you through. Okay, okay, well, then I could find the chamber. I could invert the program. And I'll just go back. No big deal. You won't exist on the other side. Get that back there. Your body's riddled with bullets. The wounds are fatal. Remember? Sign. Devoff's movie wife is an American actress whose mother was born in Pembroke. But I've always wanted to come back, you know, and see, because I have, I know I have relatives in Pembroke. I just have to figure out who's left. 
Down, give me the uh, give me phone back for please. Most of Stoller's crew are local people working on their first movie. We're going to see the Parliament buildings in the film. We're going to see the canal. We make reference to it being Ottawa. Override. The film's called Undercover Angel and it stars Yasmeen Bleeth, James Earl Jones, little Emily Mae Young from the Welch's Juice commercials, and uh, Dean Winters from the show Oz. I could tell just by a single glance I was headed for a big romance And I know that we should take the chance Cause I'm gonna love you Yes, I'm gonna love you This great love story will be ending Harrison Tyler was a struggling writer. You know, I haven't been published yet, but getting close. Searching for a future. Yeah, this is really bad. Holly Anderson was a beautiful woman. I don't have a boyfriend, and I don't plan on getting one anytime soon. Hiding from her past. I don't want to put my hand back in the fire. I just I can't. But it took a six-year-old. Here's my card. We'll do lunch. With a plan. You didn't tell me you were trying to set us up. You didn't ask and a spirit. How did you call her? And what if she says she's busy? Get over it! To bring them together. Oh look, a coupon from Nature Golf! Off to some go, dude! Do men really come from Mars? And do us women really come from Venus? You are a cutie. Thank you, my honor. Sometimes it takes the heart of a child to know the magic of love. You know her? No, actually. Why? You're drooling. PM Entertainment presents a tale of all the reasons why everybody needs an undercover angel. Still ahead. Do you think we're flying a little too close to that other plane? An independent producer goes head to head with a major Hollywood studio. They don't want me using the word castaway anywhere. The producer of Miss Castaway hopes his parody won't get swallowed by studio sharks, who claim his title is a ripoff of their hit. Now, the fate of the movie may need a higher power to beat it. The world is depending on you. Liberty, justice. From the director who saw Jurassic Park. From the producers who loved the spy who shagged me. Hello, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Oh well, this whole skinny did it. And from the writers who thought Mission Impossible was really cool. I'm not who I appear to be! Comes a movie that proves Nothing is sacred. Bless you! Bless you, my son. We'll lock off the jet. When a jet airliner packed with worldly babes... Do you think we're flying a little too close to that other plane? ...goes down over the Pacific... Ladies and gentlemen, we are in serious trouble. We've lost two engines and one of our restrooms out of order. <laughs> They'll become castaways on a deserted island. Hello? No, I'm sorry, you have the wrong number. No, no, it's okay. We have to survive until we are rescued. That could be a month, a year, never. Or even longer. Now, they'll uncover an ancient ark. 
Joan of Arc. No, no. stupid. Noah's Ark. What about my cat? And my zebras and my lions and tigers and bears. Oh, fine. I don't care whose boat it is. It can get us back to civilization two by two. If necessary, your breasts can be used as flirtation devices. What if it sails? Have to stop it, Mike. If the ark sails, oh! it will trigger the most horrific storms. I bought all your albums. God bless you. No one will survive. We've gotta destroy it. Destroy the ark? We have no other choice. It's your only way off the island. Your castmate is telling the truth. If you do not destroy the ark, then mankind will pay dearly for the consequences. Now the fate of the world rests with one man. The world is depending on you. I'm depending on you. Can you teach me how to moonwalk? Hold on, Julie! <laughs> Eric Roberts, Charlie Slaughter, and Michael Jackson, Miss Castaway. <laughs> Uh, got a book here, also an author. Brian isn't only a filmmaker, but he writes about films, and it's filmmaking uh, for, for dummies. dummies. Yes. Perfect book for me. This movie is all about um, believing in your dreams, and they will come true. And action. Across the vastness of space, a visitor from another world has come to our planet in search of the most valuable resource in the galaxy and discovers it in the most unlikely place. Paging Dr. David Summers. The aliens have landed. Never been in love. What are you looking for? Oh, my dream girl. When Dr. Summers looked to the stars. Something else, isn't it? You know, I can't wait to study Upsilon Andromeda from this scope. He never thought they were looking back. I think I made a major discovery. The telescope kept pointing at what appears to be an invisible planet. To, um, Planet David. <laughs> yeah. He was wrong. Who are you? I am Misty. How did you get here? Where's your spaceship? Your mind is my spaceship. What would you say if you met a woman? You are the only one who can see me! You couldn't touch. Misty Carr! I'd say goodbye. We are dream partners. David, this is just a theory. You are the man I dream of. This isn't real. So even though we're light years apart, we're together. Do you have any proof? No. She's in your head! No, I believe we will find life on the planet I have discovered. He must reclaim his discovery. Damn it, he stole my research. To save the girl of his dreams. I cannot remain here for very long. My soul is weakening. Before time runs out. You can't die. I am so sorry, Dave. Hey, stop the car. I can still save her. I bet we can use Observatron 1 to catch her astral image and project it home. Alex, power up the scope. You got 45 seconds to save her. Power up the scope! Dr. Malvin shut down the program this morning. The scope's dead. Police, move away from the console, no! Eric Roberts. I believe you gentlemen are trespassing. Christopher Knight. You gotta stop the launch. Joe's gonna be dead in 10 minutes if you don't stop the launch. Adrian Curry, Tim Payton, and introducing Meadow Williams. Sometimes you have to believe in something before it becomes reality. Light years away. If it wasn't for Nancy Reagan, Little Bear would not be here. She saved his life. Now, 13-year-old Little Bear and owner Brian Michael Stoller's rare twist of fate with the former first lady. In 2003, she found the then sickly pup on an L.A. street. He was actually abandoned, and he was starving to death. Mrs. Reagan fostered Little Bear for a month, then Brian adopted him. But they went on to the Reagan's Bel Air home for a playful visit. Little Bear would go on to an acting career starring in First Dog and Amazing Wizard of Paws, available at Redbox and Amazon.com. She sent me a very nice note in 2010 and how it was interesting that, you know, how after all these years, who would imagine that Little Bear would become a movie star? 
What if you were all alone in this world? Oh, we don't want him, dear. He seems too quiet. Not much of a personality. And then one night, something special, something really special came into your life. Teddy. Hmm. I wonder who you belong to. But then you found out that the most special thing in your life could never be yours. Because it belonged to somebody else. Somebody important. Somebody very important. The White House, how may I direct your call? But what if no one believed you? The President. Of the United States, yes ma'am. You'd be very important if you had the President's dog, wouldn't you? That's the President's dog. I don't know what makes you think he belongs to the President. What are you talking about? This is the story of the free world's most important dog. Mr. President? How many times have I told you? Off. And the boy who's determined to bring him home. Somebody's missing you. Somebody's wishing you. It wouldn't be easy. Animals are not allowed on the bus. But there's a picture of a dog on the bus. It was going to get dangerous. <laughs> What is the matter with you? If I tell you, I have to kill you. First American Cinema presents... We progress through strength, not weakness. Everything's gonna be okay. Big night, promise. You mean Teddy really is your dog? Let's go! Let's go! Well, that's the first dog the United States of America. Must be a big reward. Whoa! Because sometimes when everyone says you're wrong, you're right. Woo! What's the fourth of July? You say jump, I say hi, hi, do this, do that, and I'll try. Your every wish is my command. Got me eating right out of your hand. Eager to please, yeah, that'd be me. You call the shots, I'm on your leash. Do anything that you ask of me. It's a doggone truth, I'm eager to please. So eager to please. Can I have a piece of pie? Dogs are amazingly spiritual animals. One might even call them magical. Oswald. His name is Oswald. Oswald. One day, I'm going to be the greatest magician in the world. Abracadabra. Remember to keep the key close to you at all times. Dogs don't talk. Y you can't talk. <laughs> Why didn't you talk before? I had nothing to say. How old are you? 623 years old. It's Lord Guardian. You're going to be the greatest magician in the world, remember? You hungry? I'm a dog. I'm always hungry. You've got magic powers now, kid. Abracadabra? <laughs> 
doobie time. What did you do? I supposedly stole? If you follow my exact instructions, Santa Claus stole the family dog? Yes, Santa. Wait, 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 wait. I've got an idea. And that's how you create, and of course, you, you sit there, you mad magician with all your marvelous <laughs> people out here, the, the grill and all the other souls. Well, Brian Stoller, it's been a delight to talk to you, and um, to you down there in Ottawa, wherever you go, my heart is congrats for okay. the future Brian Stoller. Thank you very much. <laughs> Maybe 21 years later, they'll do film fun returns or something. That would be nice. <laughs> Something crazy keeps me going after dark Blood is pounding in my head and in my heart I've just got to see the moonlight and I run Like someone shot the silver bullet from a gun I've got the moon in my eye No one gets away alive they can't bury me for sure And I can't take this anymore There's a circle with a five-pointed star There's a footprint in the bushes by the bar People never hear the mouth begin to drool He sees a victim like a monkey on a stool I've got the moon in my eye. That was a true example of cinematic perfection, elaborating the need for enjoyable entertainment. What? It was good. Oh. <laughs>